Welcome to Good Games Spawn Point, the show for gamers by gamers. I'm Bajo. And I'm Hex. And I am Darren Zilla, King of the Monsters. Well, settle down, Darren. It looks like he's been playing a lot of Godzilla Hex, which is a game we'll be reviewing later in the show. And what would a giant city-crushing monster do without man-made structures to tear down? So we build some more in Polybridge. Must destroy! Roar! Roar! Ah, ah, Darren, save your smashing until later in the show. Fine, fine. Oh, oh, instead, I can devastate your gaming knowledge with a Darren's Challenge! Today, I'm asking you this. In the scrolling platformer Shovel Knight, what does the Trupal King do when you first meet him? Answer at the end of the show. Hmm. Right, well, now it's time for the news with Goose. <laughs> Darren, be careful. <laughs> These chairs are very important. Don't break them. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Goose here with all the gaming news from around the world. The Interactive Games and Entertainment Association has released its yearly Digital Australian report, showing trends and statistics about gaming in Australia. The report found while 68% of Australians play video games, a whopping 98% of households with children have games, and 90% of parents who play games do so with their children. It also found that the most devoted group of gamers were those aged between 5 and 14, with 91% of them playing games. And gaming's definitely not just for boys, as about half of all gamers, or 47%, are female. Brisbane man Chad Norwak has emerged victorious in the first ever National Drone Racing Championships held in California. Racers in the competition fly high-speed remote-controlled drones capable of speeds of up to 100 kilometers an hour by using special goggles that let them see through the drone's cameras. Nowak, also known as Final Glide Oz, took out all three fields in the competition, winning the freestyle, team and individual races, earning him a prize of $15,000. Well done, Chad. Well, that's all the news for this week. Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Goose. That was some quality news reporting, as always. All right, you two, get your high-vis and helmets because it's time to build some bridges. Oh. Let's do it. <laughs> Bridge is a physics-based bridge builder from developer Dry Cactus. It's currently in early access on PC, so we thought we'd have a bit of a play of it to see how it's shaping up. The aim of the game is to get vehicles from one side of the map to the other by building custom design bridges. <laughs> uh, but the game does throw a handful of obstacles your way, such as jumps, vehicles of varying weight, boats, and also the odd hot air balloon. That's right, Darren. It has a great tutorial which explains all of the building materials in the game and how they all work. Then you're thrown into the first level to build your first bridge on your own. I just love the look of this game. It has that charming, isometric art style that is just so beautiful. I really enjoyed building these bridges amongst the delightful countryside, and you can switch between real time and design mode at the flick of a button. Yes, and the music is just perfect too, isn't it? It really helps you relax listening to this calming soundtrack while you're building bridges, especially when things don't go the way you want them to. Polybridge does require quite a bit of trial and error in the design phase. It's important to have a strong base to your bridge for support while also maintaining the structural integrity on top. Yeah, it's always a challenge to build a bridge to a budget as well. Then there's always that moment just before you start your run where you're not sure if your bridge is going to hold or not. And this is what makes the game so fun in my opinion, watching my creation crumble before the first vehicle even makes it onto the bridge. Oh. Back to the drawing board. While the game isn't finished yet, Polybridge already has quite a few levels to work through, as well as its own sandbox level creator. 
mean, I'm looking forward to seeing where the developers are going to take this because it's good fun so far. Absolutely. I was surprised at how much fun I had with this game and I'm excited to see which features will be added in the future. All right, you two. I think you need a little bit more practice, uh, especially you, Barger. Uh, so why don't you go to the office and keep building bridges because I've got a developer to interview. <gasps> a developer? Off you go. Chop, chop. All right, Darren. I wonder who it is. <laughs> He's due here any minute. Oh, 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 so exciting. Oh, oh, oh. Hello, Spawnlings. We have a very special guest on the show today, Ben Thompson. He's an art director at Blizzard, and he works on a little game called Hearthstone. Ben, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Oh, oh. Now, it's a mere formality, but before we begin, I must scan you for noobishness. I understand. Hold perfectly still. Scanning. Scanning. You're completely noobite free. Thank goodness. <laughs> Could you tell the Spawnlings what motivated you to become an artist? It's something I always wanted to do, and it was either that or fly uh, fighter jets for the Air Force <laughs> or become a musician. So I figured art was the one that was for me since I'm too tall for a plane and I have very limited musical ability. Mm, a wise decision. Could you tell the Spawnlings what it's like working at Blizzard on Hearthstone? Uh, it's a pleasure, actually. It's a lot of people with a lot of the same geeky tendencies and nerdy backgrounds, and everybody gets along because we all enjoy a lot of the same things, but we channel that into making the most fun games possible. Now, could you talk about your inspiration when designing a new card in Hearthstone? Uh, the design team will basically come up with some rough ideas for what makes for a fun card in-game. Uh, it could be centered around the certain vibe or feeling that they want a game to have. If you look at the Grand Tournament, for instance, there's a lot about knights and tournaments and championships. Once it comes to the art team, it's our job to provide visuals that go in kind with that. We spend a lot of time talking to design to figure out exactly what they need for the game from a visual perspective and what we would like to see from an art side to, to make it all possible. There's even pirates riding palace. Ah! It's the grand what advice would you give to spawnlings who want to become artists themselves and how would they go about applying to perhaps become one of your freelancers? Uh, basically, the more work you put into it and the more effort you put into it and the better you'll get. So I would say just never stop drawing or painting or doing any of the, the media that you like. When the time comes and you feel like you know your work has reached a point where you would like it to be reviewed and looked at for possible inclusion into Hearthstone, send a portfolio on over to the company, show what you can do, give it your best 10 to 12 pieces, and we look forward to seeing what you have to offer. <laughs> Good advice. Uh, now, I feel there aren't quite enough mech cards in Hearthstone, and <laughs> frankly, I think they're a little underpowered. Uh, are there plans to add more mechs to the game? Well, in terms of more mechs, probably not more so much as cards that will also make those mechs stronger that already exist. <laughs> so we'll help fix that underpowered thing for you quite soon, hopefully. Oh, wonderful. You know, Darren, it came to my attention actually during the course of this interview that you're pronouncing it Hearthstone, and it's, it's actually Hearthstone. Ben, whose program is this? Uh, it's my yours. program. And who has the laser? You do? Affirmative. So how do you pronounce it? Hearthstone? <laughs> Affirmative. <laughs> uh, well, thanks for being on the show. Thank uh, you. Oh, would you like a lift back to America? That would be very helpful. Oh, no worries. Charging my teleporter! <laughs> and he's gone. <laughs> back to you, Bajo and Hex. Okay, let's start things off with this one from Narwhale. Narwhal? Narwhale and Cake, who is in Perth, Western Australia. I love Cake. I don't know if I love Narwhales. Narwhals? I think it's pronounced Narwhal, but this is spelled Narwhale. Oh. Hi, Good Game. I love your show, and I always look forward to see what interesting games you review and like to ask two things. One, have you ever reviewed cameo elements of power? And if you haven't, I'd definitely love it if you do. Two, I've seen things around about Cameo 2, but I'm unsure if it's just a rumor or not. I've looked it up and what I've seen looks older than the one I have, which is only number one. What's going on? Thanks, a narwhale eating cake. Ah! 
Oh, 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 oh. Uh, what? Well, Mr. Nahal, we haven't reviewed Cameo because it came out as a launch game for the Xbox 360 in 2005, and believe it or not, good game did not exist back then, which made it a bit tricky for us to review. Mm. Mm. But it's a good suggestion of a game to look at in one of our replay segments, maybe, so we'll definitely keep that in mind for the future. Mm. Also, as far as we're aware, there is no Cameo 2 in development. There was one in development a while ago, but it got cancelled, sadly. Or maybe what you might have seen is that it's getting re-released in a big bundle of games for Xbox One later this year. But no, it's not a new cameo. All right, well, let's move on to this one from Spencer P04 in Adelaide, South Australia. On Minecraft, how do you get a brewing stand to make a speed potion? P.S. Hex do these. Ha! Ooh. Okay, Spencer, so to craft a brewing stand, you'll need three blocks of cobblestone, easy enough to get, and one blaze rod, which is less easy. Yes, to find a blaze rod, you'll need to find yourself a fortress in the nether, and you should be able to find blazes there. If you can defeat one, it may drop a blaze rod. And while you're in the nether, make sure you find some nether wart too, because you'll need that later to make your potions. Mm, indeed. Once you've got your blaze rod, just combine your three cobblestone blocks and the blaze rod, like so, and voila, you have yourself a brewing stand. Then, to make yourself a speed potion, you'll first need to make a glass bottle using three glass blocks, like so. Then fill it with water, put it on the stand, and place a piece of nether wart in the top slot. This will make a base potion known as an awkward potion. They're useless by themselves and have no effect, but if you put them back into the stand and put some sugar in the top slot, you'll make yourself a speed potion, or a potion of swiftness to be precise. And you can make your potion even stronger by adding in either redstone dust to make it last longer, or glowstone dust to make it more potent. But let's move on to this one now from the King of First Person Shooter in Game City, Queensland. Dear Good Game SP, why is it that every now and again on Robocraft, I try to place a block on my robot and it says, you need more CPU? Please answer. Bajo, do these. <laughs> Darren is a noob. Good day. Well, your highness. In Robocraft, your CPU is basically the limit to how big and complicated your robot can be. Every block you place has a CPU cost, and more advanced blocks cost more CPU. As you level up, you'll unlock extra CPU power to build bigger robots with, and eventually, once you've unlocked enough CPU, you'll be able to build a higher tier robot. It's essentially a way to make sure all the robots within a tier are balanced and competitive with each other. So there won't be any hugely powerful robots just destroying the weaker ones. Okay, well, let's move on to this one from the King of Spartans, who is from the UNSC Infinity in Queensland. So many King's Hex. I know. <laughs> Greeting, GGSP. I am the king of Spartans. I heard that Nintendo is working on making games for mobile devices. Will they be making mobile version of games like Star Four or The Legend of Zelda? Thanks. King of Spartans, out! Well, your Spartan Highness, I think the answer to that question is both yes and no. So, no, they won't be porting existing Nintendo games onto mobile, so don't expect the new Star Fox or Legend of Zelda games for the Wii U to end up on your phone. But they will be creating entirely new games just for mobiles that use Nintendo characters. So, yes, there will very likely be a Zelda, Mario and Star Fox game made for mobiles. Mm. OK, well, we're turning through these questions, Barjo. Uh, let's move on to this one from... Uh... Oh, I know, why don't we use this one? It's an actual letter. Um, and it's from Angus, who writes... Dear Good Game, it's me, Angus again. I wrote to you and you answered back in the Minecraft special. Thanks again, guys. I'm writing now about some strange footage in the Jurassic Park special of Super Mario 3D Land. I've gotten 100% completion of 3D Land, and in the video there was a scene of a level I recognised set in Peach's castle that had a weird-looking Tanoomba, Tanuki Goomba, that was yellow instead of brown. Is there something special about the video, or am I just losing my marbles? Because I know there were no Goombas that were that colour in the game. What is the meaning of this? Is this a sign? Please let me know, guys, because the more I think about it, the more worried I get. P.S. More faces for you, Bajo. Oh, okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hmm. Well, that is a bit of a mystery, Angus. I think we might actually need to get Darren on the line to analyse the footage and find out what's going on. Mm, good idea, Hex. He's got a really long number this week. He keeps changing it all the time. OK, it starts with three, and then it's... Five. Six. Hey, Darren, we oh. hey, how's it going? We need oh. you to run some footage through your analyzer thingy and tell us why this Tanumba is the wrong colour. Mm. Can do, Bajo. <gasps> Analyzing. Freeze frame. Enhance. Enhance. Capturing colour. Hmm. That is a strange colour. And not the same as the colour they appear as in the game. Hmm. Was there maybe something wrong with the colours in the trailer? That seems doubtful. You can see behind the yellow to numbers, there are cardboard cutouts of normal Goombas, which appear to be the standard colour. And none of the other colours appear to be wrong, which suggests that there was nothing wrong with the video itself. So why are they yellow, Darren? Hmm, well, that is hard to say, Barjo. It's worth noting that this was a pre-release trailer, and games do change during development. So one theory could be that the colour of the Tanoombas in the game changed from when the trailer was made to when the game was released. Hmm, sounds like a plausible theory. Of course it is. However, it is only a theory, and unless a developer of the game can shed more light on this anomaly, we will probably never be able to fully answer the mystery of the yellow to numbers. Oh, well, thanks for that, Darren. Thanks oh, for your help. Oh, oh, anytime. Oh, goodbye. Goodbye, Darren. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 Darren, ah! Darren, Darren. Oh. Uh, we've got a spawn link here that says that you were wrong about raptors. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Unlikely, but proceed. Okay, so it's from Blake, who is in uh, Deloraine uh, in Tasmania. Um, <laughs> Just warm up the noob cup a bit here, Hex. Yeah. <laughs> okay, the letter reads. In your last episode, Darren said that the Utah Raptor was the biggest raptor in the raptor family, which is incorrect because Mega Raptor is the biggest. Mega Raptor's size is six to eight metres long, but Utah Raptor's size is only five to seven metres long. Bajo, do these. Oh, Darren, looks like you were wrong. Oh, it's noob cup time for you, Mr. Yes, here it comes. Negative. The Utah Raptor and the Velociraptor belong to the Dromaeosauride family, but despite having Raptor in its name, the Mega Raptor is not part of the same family. Oh, so it's like how killer whales are called whales, but they're actually dolphins? Oh, uh, yeah, or like how koala bears aren't actually bears. Uh, sure. Uh, the Mega Raptor was originally thought to belong to the same family as the other Raptors. However, further study has shown that it was more likely to have been a primitive Tyrannosauroid. Oh, so it was kind of like a little pre-T-Rex. Correct! Oh, little T-Rex. Uh, that is the current thinking. However, they are still unsure of how to exactly classify the Mega Raptor. So you weren't wrong? Mm -hmm. Well, I will concede that the Utah Raptor is only the largest known member of the Dromaeosauride family. There may well have been bigger ones, but we simply have no evidence of them. Mm, all right, well, I think that's as accurate as you can be, Darren. But on that note, I think we're actually out of time for this week. But if you'd like to ask us something, then you can go here and ask away. Bye, Darren. Bye, Bye. Darren. Get away with this time, Hex. Yeah. We'll get him next time. I want to know what the answer to this mystery is. It's going to be bugging me now. Okay, guys, it's time to check out the new Godzilla game. <laughs> Only we had an expert in destruction and destroying things. Yeah, if only we knew someone with those kinds of skills and experience, mm. Hex. <coughs> oh, oh, yes, of course, Darren. We should ask Goose. <gasps> yes, we should ask Goose. <laughs> Goose, but I've memorised all 482 known monster species, and I've been ruthlessly exterminating noobs for more than a millennia, and I've even made my own Godzilla yeah. costume. All right, Darren, we were just messing around. Of course, you're the perfect robot for the job. Let's smash some cities in Godzilla.
much glorious destruction. <laughs> well, I'm glad you liked it, Darren, because I was a bit lost with the story. Why is Godzilla so interested in smashing all of these generators anyway? Ah, well, you see, Godzilla was awakened by nuclear radiation. So he now needs to feed on the same radiation they're using to power their cities, uh, which in the game they call G-Energy. And along the way, he destroys everything. Buildings are obliterated. Boots broken in half. Tanks crushed like ants. Nothing can withstand Godzilla. Blah! Um, uh, OK, well, let's talk gameplay. Blah! Godzilla only has a handful of standard smashing attacks with his claws and a mighty swing of his tail. But of course, his signature move is his fiery atomic breath. Whoa, that's some seriously bad breath. I just wish Godzilla's controls weren't so clunky. Turning him around takes ages. And for some reason, you need to turn him with the controller's trigger buttons, which makes him feel like a big clunky robot tank. Objection, robots are not clunky. <clears throat> well, anyway, besides, Godzilla has always been slow and lumbering. I think they've captured his likeness perfectly. Well, OK, Darren, I mean, it may be accurate, but I have to agree with Bajo. It's just no fun playing as Godzilla when these missions are so repetitive. He simply stomps over to the nearest generator and smacks it until it explodes. Then, after taking out two more generators, the job's done. All generators in the area are destroyed. Until the next level, where he has another set of three generators to smack. Uh, yes, you have to take out something like 30 generators in this campaign. Affirmative. He's unstoppable, isn't he? All of that power. <laughs> isn't it great? No, it isn't, Darren. I need more variety in my games. The only other thing you do besides taking out these generators is fighting other monsters. Which should be the game's highlight. It should be fun. Except those clunky controls just make it a nightmare. Yeah, I found the best strategy for the close-up combat was just avoiding it altogether. I'd hit him with my atomic breath then run away, slowly, and charge it up for another blast. Running away? That's not what Godzilla would do. Clearly what's needed is my expert monster knowledge. Ah, I see this kaiju is Mothra. I'll just use my tail whip, and this'll be child's play. Oh, oh no. What happened there? That's not right. No! I don't understand. I was using the right move. It is such a shame to see the king of the monsters in such a mess. I just can't recommend this game at all. There may be a large roster of monsters to unlock, but to do that, you have to replay that repetitive campaign again and again, collecting video recordings. We can switch to the video feed at the data collection point. I just can't give this game any more than one out of five rubber chickens. Yeah, I agree. It gets one rubber chicken from me as well. This is a sad day for Godzilla fans. Mm, the king of the monsters. Mm. Well, we are almost at the end of the show, so Darren, it's time to give us the answer to your challenge. Uh, affirmative, X. At the start of the show, I asked you this. In the scrolling platformer Shovel Knight, what does the Truffle King do when you first meet him? And the answer is, he performs a fishy dance. Oh. Next week on the show, after about a bajillion spin-offs, we finally have Angry Birds 2. Well, I hope they introduce some sort of new gameplay mechanic because the world has already played millions of hours of Angry Birds already. <sighs> Oh, Darren, are you still upset about Godzilla? I know it wasn't a very good game. Affirmative. Sadness turning to rage. Charging my fire breath. <gasps> Hex, we better get out of here. Yeah, this is not going to end well. Hex out. Watch out. Darren out. Firing my fire breath. Roar!